quick guys for you, just a quick little review. Um, again, ladies and gentlemen, this is in standard form. So when we want to go ahead and write something in standard form, the vertex form, you know, obviously we want to be able to use that um, technique. But yes, it obviously to convert, it makes sense to see the benefits of why you'd want to convert it to vertex form. Um, and to make sure you know how to graph in vertex form. But it's okay, we are going to do some practice with those as well today. Um, but again, the main important thing, guys, the first thing we do is when it's in standard form, you guys know that's an ax squared plus bx plus c, right? So the first step we're going to do is we're going to put parentheses around the first two terms. So everybody that I went around and looked at, I should have seen everybody put parentheses around the first two terms. That's the basic thing. Yeah. Because remember, we need to create a perfect square trinomial to convert from standard form to basic form, or vertex form. This is not a perfect square trinomial. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put parentheses around the first two terms, and I'm going to create my own perfect square trinomial. So to create it, all I simply do is take b divided by 2 and then square it. Notice how I said that in order of the operations. So you take 6 divided by 2 and then square it. 6 divided by 2 is 3 squared, which is 9. All right, so I guess next I didn't, you know, you're going to want to show each step in each, each and every step. So now, I take the 9 and I add it inside the parentheses. And since I'm adding it to the parentheses inside, I'm going to have to subtract it on the outside. So I have y equals x squared plus 6x plus 9 plus 2 minus 9. Does, everybody have, does anybody have any questions on what I have done so far? Any questions? Anything? I can't hear the question. Okay. Comment? Okay. Yep, move it time to move it on. So now when we go and look at this, what the reason why we created those parentheses and why we did b divided by 2 squared and add it inside of there is because what we have now done, ladies and gentlemen, is created a perfect square trinomial. And we can simplify, we can factor perfect square trinomials to binomial squares, which now is going to convert our equation from standard form to vertex form. So therefore, this becomes x plus 3 squared minus 7. Guys, I'm going to have to move those desks back through there, OK? No, I'm just asking you to go through this. Well, if you want to go ahead and move away, then that's fine. I factored it. Okay, do you guys see how I got to x plus 3 squared? Yes. All you basically do is just like we did at the beginning of class period. You're going to factor, you created this. Remember, that's why the whole purpose of this is we want to create the perfect square trinomial. So we create the perfect square trinomial, then we factor it. Now we have this equation of y equals x plus 3 squared minus 7. So to go ahead and graph that, I basically now know my vertex is at negative 3, negative 7. Why is it at negative 3 again? Because remember, it's always the opposite, right, with your h. So I go to negative 3 and then down 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now, the last important thing, the reason why vertex form is so important is because when a is equal to 1, mm -hmm. when we have a is equal to 1, um, we just follow the parent graph, which is over 1, up 1, over 2, up 4. If a was not equal to 1, then we'd have to create a table of values. So over 1, up 1, over 2, up 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. 
Oh, last thing, if we wanted to go ahead and figure out the domain and range, students were asking about that again. Our domain, remember ladies and gentlemen, domain is the set of all x values. So as this graph is going up, it's consistently expanding. So the domain is going to be from negative infinity to infinity. That is the set of all x values that make up your graph. Whereas the range is the set of all y values that make up our graph. And what you guys can notice is, yeah, those y values, it's going to keep on going up and up. However, it doesn't always go as far down as we could possibly go to. So what we look at is, what is the lowest y value that this graph contains? And you just look to your vertex, which is at negative 7. So my range is from negative 7 to infinity. Okay.